So a problem I see a lot with landscape paintings is that they are keyed in wrong. So what does that actually mean to key in a painting? Keying in a painting is when the initial colors or values that you put on the canvas are then used to figure out the rest of the colors and values in the painting. So you put down the color or value of something and you say to yourself like, all right, that's right. That, that color that I just put down is correct and I'm gonna use that to make decisions on everything else. And what a lot of times happens is that initial color or value that you put down isn't the right color or value. So the rest of your colors and values end up being off and you don't really find out until the end of the painting. Let me show a quick example of an old painting of mine in Photoshop. You can see here I put in the sky really bright. I put it in too bright and that was the first thing that I put in on this painting. Therefore, everything else after that I put in too bright. The water's too bright, the tower's too bright, the grass is too bright, everything is too bright. But you can see if I had just put in the sky darker, it would have influenced me to make better decisions on the water, the grass, the tower, everything else. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't key a painting in very light or very dark and have it look good. You can. A lot of master painters have done that exact same thing. You just want to make sure you're doing it on purpose and not by accident. Now, if you've seen any of my landscape videos, you've probably heard me talk about starting a landscape painting with big shapes of flat color to completely cover the canvas with paint. So you have a color and value in each section of the painting to compare and make adjustments to as you add on smaller shapes and more detail. This is pretty much the exact same process except you're not gonna be doing it to the whole painting at once. You're gonna be doing it to just one small section. And it's good to do when you have an area in your painting where a lot of different elements meet. So this is the scene I'm gonna be painting. And you can see in this one area right here, we have a little bit of everything. We have the ocean, the sky, the rock, and some white water. Four different elements of the scene all touching together. So if I can figure out this one area and dial in these color and value relationships right, I can then use it to figure out the rest of the painting. Sky is probably gonna be the easiest thing to start out with. Skies tend to be a lot cleaner in color, so good good place to start. So I'm gonna get some blue, white, touch my cad red. You know, and try your best to get the color and value right, but if you don't, it's fine. You know, you can always adjust it. It's the point of painting it this way. Now moving down to the ocean and with water, kind of a thing to be aware of is a lot of times it's kind of greener than like sky. Water gets a little more greener as it gets closer to us. This water here, just kind of let it blend in. Probably the thing that's gonna tell us the most about this is this white wave. I mean, sometimes it's best to start with this brightest light, a little white touch of yellow ochre. Keeping the paint thin here because it's just kind of a block out, but getting this really bright value do not go to pure white. Don't fall into that trap. It's gonna help you really see things. I'm gonna get it in and on the edge here, I'm even gonna kinda like let it blend a little bit with that green, get a soft edge, cause it is water, it's moving. The soft edge is gonna help that. But you can see it's working. Uh, if, if this isn't looking very bright, you're like, oh man, my water's not looking that bright. Check these colors, they might not be dark enough. I wanna talk a little bit about putting your brightest value in early. And it actually might be best to put it in first. I very much could have put this white wave in first. And when you get that brightest value in early, it really helps you figure out and dial in all the other values. In one of my favorite painting books, Landscape Painting Inside and Out by Kevin McPherson, he does a very similar thing. A lot of times he likes to get his darkest dark and lightest light in first. That way he knows the boundaries of his value scale for that painting. Now I've actually talked about getting your brightest value in early in some of my portrait painting videos. Same goes for your brightest bright. That's actually what happened in this painting of Walter White that I did. I actually put in this really bright highlight on his forehead because I know this highlight is, is pretty much almost pure white. But once I got that in there, I knew, okay, this brightest highlight on his forehead, it's got to be right. Like I can't be, it's very hard to get that wrong. So once I have that, I could compare things around it. I could say, okay, now this other areas on the forehead that's right next to this bright highlight, how do they compare to that highlight? And I saw that mine were, was a lot darker. So I'm like, all right, I need to lighten it up and I need to better match the difference between that bright highlight and the rest of his forehead around that bright highlight. See, this is a good example of why it's helpful to paint different subject matter. Painting portraits is gonna help you get better at landscapes and painting landscapes is gonna help you get better at portraits. See, since now I got everything, you know, I kind of figured that out, I'm kind of gonna go into a blocking stage now for everything. I'm just blocking these waves in one simple mass. Again, kind of letting this blend a little bit into the rock there green color that had the ocean there, this little section. I'm wondering if I need to lighten this purple up down here. I think I'm gonna lighten it just a bit. So I'm just gonna adjust that light just a little bit. Yeah, I like that a lot better. This is turning into quite the sky demo. 
Guys are uh, tougher than you think. Common thing people do is they kind of phone them in, think they can just kind of slap on something, put a gradient on it. You know, the sun is coming from the left side. So cool blue, it's gonna kind of taper down more. So there's gonna be more of the lighter warm sky as we go left. So I might wanna bring this up just a bit. I mean, it shouldn't be anything dramatic to give variety in your sky. And so it's not just like a perfect, you know, band, band, band that the lighter part gradually takes up more space base. I'm going to kind of map out the shape of these shadows. Squint in my eyes. This ridge is kind of important, you know, because it's bringing us back down to this rock, which is important compositionally. So I'm going to angle that down towards the rock a bit. One of the most helpful things I could probably tell you about painting rocks is less is more a lot of the times. The more you can combine shapes combine a bunch of smaller shapes into fewer, simpler, big shapes, better off you're, you're gonna be. I'm gonna find more volume on the light side, a slightly lighter value here. I don't wanna get super detailed with this. Push this a little lighter. Get this darkest dark in first. The shadow, kinda map out this shadow shape. Still, how dark I'm making this. A lot of times I see people, myself included, that uh, make rocks too bright because you see the sun hitting them. You want to make them really bright on the lighter side, but they're actually pretty dark in value. There is a reflection happening from this rock here. I'm going to map it out. It, you know, drops straight down, kind of like right here. Kind of seeing different colors happening here. Notice my brushwork side to side, kind of random. Not like perfectly doop, 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 but I'm trying to be as free flowing as I can. Kind of break this white water down to a simple shape like that. Take some of this purple, use it as a base, keeping it pretty thin here. Put a bunch of white water and everything on top of that later. Now this sand, sand can be tricky. Always ask yourself, you know, from here to here, what's the difference? It's a little more yellow, a little more brownish. Start with some burnt sienna. That burnt sienna is gonna be way too red. Red complements green, which is a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Now it's like this color, and it gets a little, little band, like a darker color first right there. Push in the white water here a bit more. And you might have to bounce around back to your water, a lot of pushing and pulling. You wanna kinda work wet into wet paint here. I'm gonna get some white, touch of my yellow ochre, some of the water up close here. A little bit of blue in here, and these waves kinda thinking about which side the sun's hitting, where the shadows would be, which is kinda more on the right. White and a bit of yellow ochre. Let the paint get pretty thick. Trying to think about form, these waves. We got this light color to throw. Got some empty space here that I wanna direct this way, so. Let's put a little bird back there. Got this angle rock. So I'm gonna put the third final bird way back there. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at 4 is a 43 I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.